morning. It's April 9th. Welcome to the table. We'll start the uh, session off with the words from Mayor Pierce. As it is every single day, thank you again. My thanks go again to everybody for all of uh, the media and all of our all of our uh, health agencies that are here to report on exactly what's going on in the in the city of Timmins. I can't stress enough my thanks to everybody out there in the front lines, the volunteers as well that are that are delivering these meals, everybody that's that's helping us get through this. Um, I believe Dr. Canton is on the line. Berkman Health Unit on the line. You are, you're muted. We'll, uh, I didn't hear anybody call in. But we'll, I'll hand it over to Dave and then we'll, we'll get on with the rest of the agenda. All right, thank All you, Your Worship. Uh, Dr. Catton just arrived, so we'll give her a couple minutes to, uh, to get herself ready and we'll ask for an update from the Timmins and District Hospital. Good morning, it's Kaylee Russell with the Timmins and District Hospital. Um, so we have no operational updates, but we just want to take a couple of seconds to wish all of the frontline workers, essential workers, their families, and the community a safe Easter weekend. Uh, while we should all be physically distancing to stop the spread of COVID-19 in our community, we should not be socially distancing ourselves from family and friends throughout the holiday weekend. We encourage people to safely connect with their families by phone, over Skype, FaceTime, and other online platforms. And as a reminder, free phone and TV services are available in all patient rooms. Uh, if you're looking for information on contacting a patient in the hospital, please contact our general information line at 705-267-2131 for more information. Don't invite COVID-19 to your dinner table this Easter weekend. Stay safe. Stay home with immediate family members only, and please wash your hands often. Thank you. Thanks, Kaylee. Uh, next, I'll ask uh, Brian Marks with the DSAP if there's an update. Yeah, good afternoon. Thanks, Dave. Uh, yesterday, we had uh, 21 uh, EMS calls in Simmons. Um, four failed the uh, screening protocol. Um, in terms of a child care update, um, we received permission um, from the uh, Fort Point Health Unit to proceed with establishing a center for emergency workers and we're working on the next steps to uh, make that happen. Hope to have uh, progress on that early next week. Uh, in terms of the homeless population, uh, open an additional site uh, to be able to accommodate those who uh, are in need and we're congregating at the Cedar Street location. Um, so that third site is in addition to the uh, Northern College and uh, Cedar Street locations. Um, <clears throat> Food security programs uh, continue as scheduled. Um, so if people are interested or need information, just visit the uh, Cochrane DSAB website, www.cdssab.on.ca, uh, and that will list all the times and locations to uh, access food security programs. Uh, thanks very much. All right, thank you, Brian. Next, I'll ask Seth Bowman here, City Clerk, to give a quick update. Who did you call on? I didn't hear that. That's Steph Palmas here, the city clerk. Okay. All right. Sorry. Thank you, Dave. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just an update that enforcement services continue to visit establishments providing essential services, as well as they continue to respond to inquiries from the public. We would like to thank the businesses for their continued cooperation in complying with the provincial orders. We would also like to thank the public for doing the same. To date, Enforcement Services has not had to lay any charges. Also, we'd like to just remind everyone that we are trying to ensure that everyone stays safe during this very difficult time, and we appreciate your cooperation and assistance in complying. Uh, we're working hard to keep our community safe and healthy, and we need your help to do so. Thank you. All right, thank you, Steph. Um, on behalf of our uh, waterworks and uh, sanitation uh, groups, I'd like to remind people that disinfecting wipes and cloths shouldn't be flushed. Uh, you know, the city mantra is no wipes in the pipes. They do, they do gum up the system. They jam up the pumps. 
Uh, so while everyone is taking extra precautions to wipe down and, and, and uh, stay safe, all of those things should go into the garbage, uh, in bags into the garbage. Uh, so we'll thank you for that. And I would also like to uh, express thanks to the city workers uh, in public works out on the roads, uh, dealing with drainage issues, potholes, uh, snow that's coming, and snow that we've had to, to our sanitation workers uh, who are out there every day picking up, uh, and to the uh, men and women in our water plant and wastewater plant. I would like to thank all of you guys for the work that you do for keeping us all safe. Uh, and from this point, we'll hand it over to Dr. Catton. Thank you, Dave. Good afternoon, everyone. So for the Porcupine Health Unit, I can report today that as of, as of the end of the day yesterday, we had 562 tests completed across the region. The update today is that 34 of those are positive or have been positive, 415 are negative, and we now have 113 pending. 11 cases have now resolved, and unfortunately, as, as people are aware and our condolences continue, um, for, the, for the two loss of the loss of two lives that we've seen through COVID-19. So today, the Porcupine Health Unit is reporting three new COVID-19 cases among residents in the health unit area. The first two cases. So the first case is a female in her 50s. This one, we do not have any linkages to international travel, nor any other cases at this point in time. And so this is where we designate community exposure, meaning that it is another signal of local transmission. And again, heightening the need to follow all the public health precautions that we continue to share. The individual is in self-isolation and was tested on April the 4th. The next one is a female in her 50s as well. Uh, she was identified as a close contact of a case and has remained in self-isolation and following public health guidance and was also tested on April the 4th. The 34th case is a male in his 80s. He was identified as a close contact of a case and was in self-isolation and following guidance as per protocol. He's unfortunately been admitted to hospital, so we're hoping for a speedy recovery, that he does well along with all of our other cases, and he was tested on April the 5th. So again, we need to uh, again thank all of the contacts and cases and the healthcare providers that continue to work with us for all the contact tracing, investigation, um, as well as the ongoing connections with the Porcupine Health Unit uh, to follow cases and their contacts throughout the course of, of the investigation and the follow-up time period that is required. We are confirming today that an employee of Extended Care Simmons has tested positive for COVID-19. The individual is a close contact of a confirmed case, which was not related in any way to the facility or work there. She has been in self-isolation since being identified as a close contact. Any resident who is experiencing symptoms have been tested and results so far for COVID-19 have been negative to this point. As per the Ministry of Health guidelines, a COVID-19 outbreak has been declared at the facility. I just want to emphasize that the guidelines state that if any case in a staff member or a resident of COVID-19 is found, that an outbreak be declared. So I recognize the, the concern um, with respect to the term outbreak and the declaration of an outbreak, but I just want to confirm that at this point, we still only have the one case. Um, we think the potential risk to residents and staff is actually quite low for two reasons. One, the timeline that the individual was there and the fact that they were identified very early on in being a contact and that they have remained in self-isolation and continue to follow public health guidance and we, we appreciate them for that. The second thing is that extended care along with all of the long-term care and congregate settings uh, homes within the Porcupine Health Unit area have been following all of the guidance with respect to infection prevention and control. This is something they do on a regular basis with respect to influenza, and we've continued regular contact with all of these facilities throughout the COVID-19 preparation and response. And most recently had a meeting just last week, again providing further updates and guidance and checking in. So we are quite confident that Extended Care has really been doing an excellent job to protect uh, all of their residents and their staff, and they continue to do that and work with us on a regular basis. Today, the Porcupine Health Unit COVID-19 information line is open from 8.30 to 7.30. The toll-free number and all of the updates are provided on the website. There are also local contact numbers for other PHC community offices. We are now uh, 
very pleased to announce that we have COVID-19 assessment centers not only in Timmins, Cochrane, Miracle Falls, and Capus Cason, but Horn Cain as well. And Hearst will um, likely be up and running next week, which is um, all of them are in large part due to immense, immense uh, work and collaborations amongst healthcare and community partners within each of these communities. And we thank them for that as we see increased need for assessment and testing going forward. So again, I can't emphasize enough that we are seeing community transmission of COVID-19 in our area. We yesterday saw changes with respect to testing, and we know that things change often with respect to a pandemic and with respect to public health response to a pandemic. All of us are called on to change our practice and behavior as appropriate, and we do. We have, and we will continue as a public health unit representing all of our communities to be nimble and quick and to respond to the pandemic and the changing guidance that is based on evidence and the ministry guidance going forward. We will continue to follow the guidance of the Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. David Williams, and the experts of Public Health Ontario uh, and the Ministry of Health with respect to COVID testing. And we will continue to adapt to this evidence and the guidance as it evolves. And we will share that with all of our partners going forward. At this point in time, we did see uh, changes and, and discussions around increased testing. And I will just share at this point, we're still awaiting some, some further details, but we do know that the priority groups going forward remain um, very much the same in that increased emphasis on increasing testing for hospital inpatients and residents living in long-term care and retirement homes, as well as healthcare workers, caregivers, care providers, and first responders. Uh, in addition to remote, isolated or, isolated or rural or Indigenous and First Nations communities. So those are some of the some of the adaptations that we have today, and we'll continue to share that as things evolve, and we will continue to adapt. With Easter and long weekend ahead, we know there is an ever increasing temptation to visit with loved ones and friends. Please don't. We again urge everyone to stay home. Do not travel out of your house or your community unless it's essential. Please stay home. When you need to go out for essentials, please maintain the two meter physical distancing from others when in public. This is absolutely critical at this point in time. We did hear from Dr. Teresa Tam, sorry, the Chief Medical Officer of Health from the Public Health Agency of Canada with respect to um, potential considerations for the use of homemade masks. Again, I just want to emphasize that this is a, an opportunity for people uh, to further um, protect community members, but again, keep in mind the potential limitations of the masks. We want to make sure that all of our medical stock masks are maintained for healthcare workers and first responders as needed, who are having more, um, more close contact with potential COVID patients or confirmed patients as we need to care for them in acute care facilities. The use of a cloth mask is generally to protect others from yourself. So we want to make sure that people understand that it's not necessarily an added protection for yourself. However, it could be a way to consider increased protection for all of our communities as a whole and another opportunity to flatten the curve. Things to keep in mind are that if you are touching the outside of the mask when you've been out in public, that's now contaminated. So please, if you're going to do this, make sure that you are taking the mask on and off only after washing your hands and that you are only removing the mask from the earpieces themselves, and then they need to be washed after every use. Things to keep in mind is that this is not to replace all of the other important public health measures. It is an additional option for individuals should they wish, should they wish to use it um, when they're maybe out in public and not able to maintain physical distancing of two meters. For instance, sometimes in grocery stores or pharmacies when you're out for essential tasks. It is not in any way to say that it is okay to visit with others, whether indoors or outdoors. Please remain with your immediate family members who you live with only. We again remind everyone that the most important evidence-based measures to protect yourself, your loved ones, and all of our communities, and to help contribute to flattening the curve across the Porcupine Health Unit, remain to wash your hands often and well and to maintain physical distancing of two meters when out of your house and stay home as much as possible. Stay home, 
stay well. Thank you. Merci and make it. All right, thank you, doctor. Now we'll open up for a few questions from the media. David, it's Bob at Moose FM. I just have one quick one. It's a process question. Are you going to be doing the daily call every day, all weekend? Yes, we'll be continuing these calls over the weekend. Same time, same place. Okay, so Friday and Monday included. Right. Okay, thank you. All right, Hi, any other Lydia? questions? Yes, I have one. It's Lydia. Okay, go ahead, Lydia. Hi, this is for Dr. Catton. Dr. Catton, um, you say that you are satisfied with the way things are being handled at uh, Extended Care Timmins, but I've been receiving private messages from, from family members who have loved ones there, and they're very concerned with uh, the lack of social, uh, physical distancing and the lack of wearing masks. How can you assure families um, uh, who have loved ones at extended care that everything is okay there. Thanks, Lydia. I think at this point in time, it's really difficult to assure everyone. Um, and I think we need to recognize that fears for loved ones are real and they're important and we need to acknowledge them and accept that individuals are going to have that fear and that concern. We have touched base with all of the long-term care facilities, as mentioned late last week, reinforcing messages around physical distancing for meal times, increased sanitation, increased um, response with, as far as uh, active staff monitoring and assessment for potential symptoms. And, and at this point in time, to our knowledge, all of the facilities have really been following um, the steps necessary. And so I think at this point in time, the, the assurance that I can provide is that everybody is, is committed to protecting all of our population members uh, across the board and recognize that in this instance, it's extremely difficult for families when you're not able to see your family member, especially um, at a time like this when we know um, concerns are at an all-time high. And, and we're, with what we've seen across the province, we understand that concern and we share it. And we're all working really hard to, to protect everyone involved. Thank you. Thanks. And this Thanks, is Dr. for Steph. Okay, go ahead. Steph, um, you know, is would bylaw officers be checking in on essential workplaces to, to make sure that, you know, if you're going into grocery stores, would you also go into long-term care facilities to ensure everything's okay there? Sorry, Lydia, are you asking are our officers going to go to the long-term care facility? Yes, to, to make sure that uh, physical distancing, that everything is, is, all the rules are being followed, or does that just lie with the health unit? Yeah, uh, no, we won't be sending our officers to the any of the long-term care facilities or anything like that. that. It will be left with the, the staff and the management of those facilities, as well as with the, the Porcupine Health, health Unit. Hey, thanks. Lydia, I can add to that. So the Porcupine Health Unit, our public health inspectors are the ones who are designated for infection prevention and control and the PIDAC recommendations from Public Health Ontario that are longstanding and we've always worked with long-term care home facilities for and support uh, all the processes as well as completing inspections. We have been uh, attending some uh, long-term care facilities throughout the course of this to assess and, and help with any potential measures possible. And there was an updated um, recommendation and order from the Chief Medical Officer of Health last night that further strengthens um, the role of the public health measures and all of the, the agencies have been um, provided this and we're having another call with them again this afternoon. So there are further measures that are being instituted um, today across the province to protect this population in these facilities. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, any last questions before we ask Mayor Peary first uh, closing comments? It's, it's Jill here. Can I just add one thing? Sure. Yeah, so uh, Jill Bisson, uh, just I think people know, but if they don't know, <clears throat> there's going to be a session of the legislature on Tuesday in order to extend the emergency measures 
uh, for the province of Ontario. They have the authority by, 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 by uh, law to be able to do the first one, but after so many days, you have to have the legislature authorize a continuance. Uh, so we will be meeting on Tuesday with a small group of people at Queen's Park as we did uh, under the budget update. And uh, we are also dealing with an omnibus bill that deals with a number of, uh, a number of ministries in order to be able to assist with their work that they have to do in the fight towards uh, trying to deal with COVID-19. Uh, last thing I just want to say, a, a shout out uh, to everybody out there who's working, if it be in the private sector or in our healthcare system, uh, they are doing an amazing job of making sure that service is there for all of us, and we appreciate it. And I really want to thank uh, Dr. Canton and her group for the uh, work that she's done in helping us deal with some of the issues uh, that we brought before them, and it's uh, worked out quite well. All right, thank you, uh, uh, MPP Biso, and of course, if you can bring some PPE back from a Queen's We are Park. working on that, as you well know. <laughs> but we certainly appreciate it. Uh, at this point, I'll ask Mayor Perry to, to close up. Well, thank you all again for participating, and uh, Dr. Canton for being here in person to deliver that uh, <clears throat> very important news, difficult news, tough news. Uh, as I said before, most important weekend, Easter weekend, long weekend. We know what we must do. We know that it's not the normal Easter. We know families want to be together, but it's only the immediate family that you're living with on a continual basis that should be together. It's a tough situation, tough situation for uh, people like me that have grandchildren that can't get together. It's a tough situation, of course, for everybody that has got a loved one uh, in extended care and other, other areas that they won't be able to visit. And uh, it's an important weekend. It's an important weekend to remember all the advice that we've been giving, given. Um, just to echo what Dr. Canton said about not traveling, Mayor Bigger in Sudbury has requested that no one travel to Sudbury. It's the same message across the north. Stay here. Stay in your own town. You don't know what you're bringing with you. And no one likes an unexpected visitor. So remember all of that. Remember all of that. Very important uh, weekend for uh, Judeo-Christian religions. And perhaps tomorrow, Sunday, you can find it in your heart to say a prayer with everybody that's on the front lines, everybody that's affected and working hard to keep us safe. So with that, I want to thank you. We will be here tomorrow. We'll be here Saturday. We'll be here Sunday. We'll be, through, we'll be here throughout the weekend. This virus doesn't take a rest, and neither do we. So we'll be here for you. Thank you very much. Thank you.